Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey is into an area that I know nothing about. But our guest, Freya Fox, is an absolute genius. She knows how to do all kinds of wonderful things. And today we are looking at a, tell me, all right, Rhea, uh, before I screw up the name, what is it exactly? Marcia, first of all, I want to thank you. I, there's nothing better uh, for a person like me who, than to be called an absolute genius. I'm just going to, I'm going to sit there and ohm on that for a second. I'm an absolute genius. Okay, that was <laughs> Go ahead, be, be an absolute genius. We are, I love it, yes. We are, we are, we are taking a look uh, at it, it, my Realm is the cards of destiny, the cards of destiny system, cards of your destiny. It's an ancient metaphysical system that um, reflects based on the birth date that one has chosen what the life path is, what the path of the soul is in this lifetime. Um, I have so much fun with it. I, I use it to share what comes across, you know, not for me, but as enlightenment for people. Uh, hearing things that they perhaps they had most of the time people have an intimation of what they're here for and what their purpose is and that sort of thing when they hear the cards of destiny message it's generally like oh, I knew it or you know affirmation confirmation of, of of why what we're doing here so it's really it's fun too and I'm fun and I'm funny at least I think I'm funny and, <laughs> well, okay, and um, for, for our audience she is a dear friend, and everybody that watches knows I only talk to dear friends. And I don't know how long she's been a friend, but I'd say 20, 30 years, maybe. Many yeah. days. Yeah. So um, it, it's been a real pleasure to take this journey with you. Okay. So. And may I say, may I say in regard to what I was just saying, you find all kinds of relationships. I mean, we'll be talking about this, but we find all sorts of relationships in the cards. And Marsha and my birthdays are two days apart, which allows us to have a very, it's like a loving Venusian relationship. If you know anything about the planet Venus, it's love and romance and femininity. You know, we, we, we kind of, I think we switch back and forth. Who's the mother? Who's the daughter? <laughs> but, uh, but it's definitely that loving Venusian energy that we share. It's perfectly uh, displayed in the cards of destiny system. Bingo. Well, bingo. Now let me tell and tell my tell the audience. Okay. When we met. Okay. We were taking a seminar. Oh gosh. And the lady was asking to tell us something about ourselves. So I said, "Well, um, my former husband is a retired." Air Force officer and an attorney. And Rhea turns around and looks at me and said, are we married to the same man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will never forget that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten that, but thank you for reminding me that it's really That's hysterical. So much fun. And <laughs> so, so we connected. And no, it's not the same man. It, it just, the description just fits. That's Air Force all. <laughs> attorney, <laughs> former husband aspect. Former husband, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, everybody's gotten one of them, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but so that's how we started this journey together. And that's been, I don't know how many years now. But it's been years of fun it's and been laughter. Years, and sharing, yes. sharing intelligence and, you know, just making each other, helping each other open our minds to new, new things. It, it definitely goes both ways. And I'm honored and grateful and thankful to be blessed to have a friendship with Marcia Joyner. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And now let's talk about the cards. Okay. Well, again, the cards of destiny system, ancient. Now, the first thing your mind might think, ancient, cards of destiny, cards, hmm, ancient, how ancient are the cards? Um, the hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades 
the numbers one through 13, ace is one and 13 is the king of each suit. I feel these symbols are somehow keyed into the, into our DNA. You know, when it comes down to it, it's been proven. This is not something mystical that I made up, but it's everything is vibration, which means everything is numbers or it can be translated into numerical value. And that's where I feel like the system crosses over into uh, the potential of being keyed into our DNA. We're in my lifetime, so many things have been discovered. So many things have been uncovered and discovered, and this will continue for all of us for our lifetimes. And so I feel like, and actually I pray that in my lifetime, I get to see how this all connects with each of us as human beings. Uh, astrology, the S Cards of Destiny system comprises or uh, includes astrology, numerology, and psychology, and that's why I love it. I've always been fascinated by birthdays and astrology, always been fascinated by numbers. I'm speaking even as a child. I wanted to know people's birthdays, and back in those days, it was about the uh, signs. That was what we had available. That was what I knew. As time went on and I learned more and more, especially when I came upon this system 26, 27 years ago, um, it was more about the actual day that you were born. So much information comes out of the actual day that you were born. And there are even other systems that take it down to the time, of course, the place. There's so many metaphysical systems, metaphysics, uh, expansion of the physical. Uh, there was the, there's the birthday card chart. So if you are, are very you know astute, you can just take a, take a look and see what your birthday is right now, uh, the dear viewers. Um, but every day, uh, the time, the place, all of these come into uh, consideration when we're doing these interpretations. In the Cards of Destiny system specifically, it's the day and the date. The day and the date makes all the difference in the world to know that. What do you mean day and date? That means, uh, the, excuse me, the day and month. Thank you. Oh, okay. Month and the date. Uh, for example, as a person who's born like me on May 24th, uh, my... Like us. Yeah, like us, the May, well, you're, <laughs> May. May 22nd, yeah. May 24th, May 22nd is the 10 of clubs, and the uh, uh, May, 20, May 22nd is the 10 of clubs, May 24th is the 8 of clubs, and those say, those are cards of the, or energies of the intellectual suit, uh, we're always interested in ideas and learning more, and uh, for a 10, all 10s, people who are 10s are successes, you're successful in the realm of intellect, uh, and the eight, eight numbered person like myself, it, it talks about power, it's mind power. Um, I, I, I don't have many regrets in this life, Marsha, but gosh, I wish, I, I have kind of a, a, a mission to get this information to as many young people as possible because I really didn't find out anything about this till I was almost 50. And I am not complaining about my life, I'm not complaining about my, experiences and the successes and failures, which is what we learned from, uh, that I had up to that point. But the clarification that can come in having this information say, oh, before you're 30, or like the youngest client I've had is 19, which just thrilled me. Um, it helps clarify, it helps narrow the field because no, there's no so little clarity on what it is that we're here for up until a certain point. And of course we operate out of these systems where you're supposed to follow your parents or you're supposed to follow this particular train of education and therefore that, but a lot of times the heart is coming from someplace else. What the heart desires and what the soul desires can be very different from what we're led to do. And when you have this information, you can still choose whatever, you know, I mean, maybe a person from a um, family of physicians would still be a physician, but in their heart, they're an artist. And so uh, they might do physician for X number of years or decades and then say, OK, I'm done with that and go off and be an artist and not have any feeling that it was wrong or bad or they made a mistake or anything of that sort. The heart was guiding them all along. Uh, you know, I when like I was a child. When I was Pardon? a child, my mother used to say that I had wanderlust. 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 Yeah. yeah. So you, I would go to school, like all little good children, and my sit down and be quiet, and then oh. my soul would go right out the window. Zoom. 
that was so difficult for you. You're such a powerful person. You came into this life with so much power and so much like intelligence, intellect, ability to see through things, uh, actually ability to master so many levels of reality. And at the same time, I mean, God bless us all parents, we're here to protect the children. But one of the things that we're all taught, I think most of us have to go through this is our parents, as parents, we're taught to you know, be the sovereign. They don't know, the child doesn't know, and we know. And that's just not the way it is. That's not the truth. It's protect. Yeah. Protect, create boundaries and 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 uh, direction. But a child comes in, you know, uh, it was Gibran that said, uh, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. Wow, that's great. Never were truer words spoken. They're the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. You cannot, I'm going to, you know, those are the lines that I remember. But in other words, you don't own them. You just hear, they're here with you for a moment, but they're here as an expression of the, the universe, of the divine, of the divine energy, and they're here with their own purpose and mission. And if parents could be taught that, there would be, I believe, a lot more peace in this world and a lot more happy children and a lot more parents kind of sitting off going, wow, I'm so wow. my child doing what, the, what their soul, soul yes. led them to. <laughs> and so, but speaking of, your, I am looking at in the back there behind you and all of the different cards and the numbers. And of course, I mentioned Wonderlust, but you know, the name of our program is Navigating the Journey. Yeah. And that's what we do. And every week we have somebody else on a different journey, which is all wonderful. All of the different people that have all of these different things that they're doing. And it's it's really great to just sit here and let them go on their journey. And it, it's a thrill for you because of the mind that you are. You're in, in, in eternally curious. You want to know. You want to know what people are made of. You want to uh, understand. You know, I, I think there's a point for intellectual people or people who are mind driven or mercury driven as we both are, where we realize there is no way we can know everything. And I'm going to say it's a moment of despair. Life is not long enough. There's not enough time. There's not enough brain power. It's not meant to be. And so we have to make peace with that. And then we just play and play in the realm of knowing, play in the realm of uncovering secrets and, and things we're carrying. A really about. interesting question from a viewer. And she said, I have to assume it's a she. I am currently trying to have a child. Yes. If I wanted my child to be born in the perfect month, what factor would I consider? Ooh. I don't know what a perfect month is. I, well, I'm going to say that right away. I have no idea what a perfect <laughs> month is. What would be perfect? Now, but of course, I'll tell you, since the two of us are Geminis in May, that's the perfect month. That is the perfect <laughs> month. That's the perfect month. <laughs> but I... <laughs> Does it get better than May? And not, I you know, don't not know. Me, because part of me is Taurus. But yeah. after May 21st, it gets really good. Yeah, no, I... The perfect month, um, I think if I had to choose a perfect month, my number four child is a Libra, and that is such a delightful child. Balance. Such a, such a delight. And I, you know, uh, all of them are fun. I've got four, and they're all different, and they're all wonderful. But the Libra is such a beautiful person. Just, Lovely. Just, yeah. And that's Marsha's take on the perfect month. That's, that's my take on the perfect month. Perfect astrological sign, because it's not yeah. just a month, they almost always overlap. Um, I think the, the thing though to consider is you can't choose a perfect month without knowing the um, astrology of the parents, because it's all about the balance and the match. It's how you well. interact with the child. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and how, well, how their astrology interacts with yours. You mm. know, because uh, for example, uh, my daughter, whom I adore, I only have one. Uh, we're very, very different in our views of life. 
And I think again, before it was quite a bit before she, before I discovered this in my life and I was raising her according to what I thought. And I gave her some beautiful foundation. It's beautiful things that I've shared with her, which she admits or not admits, but what she <laughs> notes now, <laughs> was that a slip? Anywho, uh, the point is that she, I think I was trying to mold her somehow into my idea. And reality is when you know the destiny path of your child, you're not trying to mold them into you. You're trying to, you're, you're actually making space for them to be them, for them to unfold, unfold who they are. Uh, again, going back to what's perfect for, uh, you know, air signs do well together, earth signs do well together, uh, fire signs do well together, generally speaking, uh, uh, air signs, uh, air, water signs do well together as far as making a, 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 a match for um, a child and a parent or a set of parents, preferably is what I would say at this point. Uh, it's still, it's the, the card. The card becomes very specific. One day being born on one day and then can be extremely different from the next day. So I think you just have to really pray on that, mother. You have to pray on that. Ask the gods and goddesses yeah. of all of creation to send you the perfect child. The perfect child, yes. The perfect child and the perfect birth date. <laughs> yes. My my number one child is an Aries with the Taurus rising. She's in charge. She takes in charge. I mean, it's been all of these years. She's still in charge of all of her brothers, and they're all married. They all have children, but she's still in charge, and she's the oh. Aries. There you go. She'll, she'll say, Marsha, now, really, you know, and I'm, when I hear that tone of voice, oh, okay, you know, because she's in charge. Mm -hmm. I gave up. <laughs> Marsha, you think you're the mother, but actually, could no. you move out of my way? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Super cute. Super but, cute. But, you know, um, if you look at the, the I don't know, say the calendar, but you look at the numbers in America and there's so many in September because that's New Year's Eve conceived well, New Year's it's Eve. Winter, it's winter. Yes. And they're conceived on New Year's Eve, you know, the parties on New Year's oh, Eve. Yeah. So, so that takes you into September. And then you look at this other, and then there's uh, weddings in June. Okay. Yeah. So those are the two anchors where you can see in the cal in the hospitals and all of these times when you have these children. So January. So now if you're going to look for the time to conceive, then think of what you would like to have, and then. You know, and there are whole there are whole sciences on all of that. I mean. Yes. It's but no, I'm just saying if you just look at the calendar and see. How many children were in the hospital on that in that period? You count back and say, "Oh, those are New Year's Eve babies," you know. Oh, okay. And then, well, it, as yeah. is always so true in this kind of situation, the time is ripping by. So mm -hmm. I really just give little sketches of the Cards of Destiny system. I do want people to know that I do individual readings on the card. They're very instructive, very informative, and as I said, very fun. And uh, I think you're going to have uh, an opportunity to be able to contact me and um, have me give you a little bit more information if you need it before I schedule you. That presum yeah. presumptuous. But the thing we want to talk about for sure today is the astrological moment. What's going okay. on right now? First of all, we are making jokes, or I was making jokes anyway, yeah, before the show started, because we are two days from uh, a Mercury retrograde, and tomorrow is the full Leo moon, the first full moon of, of, uh, of 2021. The Leo moon, and this first Leo moon is a very powerful moon. It's actually called a wolf moon, and I got to tell you, I don't even know what that means right now. I'm going to have to research that, but anybody who's out there who wants to take a look, it's a wolf moon. This first moon is a wolf moon, and it is a powerful moon because it's conjunct, meaning it's really close to the planet Leo, uh, to the planet, um, to the planet uh, Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion, good luck and good fortune both spiritually and materially. 
So if you would ever do, uh, you know, a prayer or a, a, a spiritual bath or a walk in nature when you talk to God, uh, tomorrow would be the day to do it. It's a day for uh, creating prayers uh, that really focus on what it is that you want to be creating right now. It's a full Leo moon. They're calling it the day of miracles. And so what that means is a time for visualization, creation and manifestation. So I have learned not to let these things kind of slide by, you know, uh, it sounds like a good idea. You can let the day go by and nothing happens. Uh, actually, we're already in the space of it, you know, a couple of days before and three days after the full moon, the energy is still there. So make time to write out what you would like to see unfolding in your life, to give voice the, the way you'd like things to be rather than perhaps the way they've been. Uh, give voice, give thought, give uh, conscious thought to, with the knowing that your conscious thought and your words are creative, to bring into existence things that you desire. It's a very powerful time for doing just that. The full moon in Leo conjunct um, uh, excuse me, the full moon in Leo with Jupiter conjunct the sun. Now, that's a tip for, for our guest. Then I think that because uh, the moon was gorgeous about three yeah. o'clock this morning, it was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, but for our guest to come up with the perfect uh, month for the child to be born. <laughs> I would think that it with this moon, go for a walk with your husband, your mate, or whomever, and really, you know, create, consciously create the perfect time. Yeah. Because the two the, of you. The two the of you. Yeah. Perfect. Because the impulse is always there, is it not? If we're listening, we're always getting impulses. Yes. You know, even I, I can say without equivocation, when uh, my daughter was born, she was, she had already been talking to me for months. She already, actually, I felt like her soul was following me because I went around the world the day before she was, or the year before she was born. I tell her, I laughingly tell her, I was trying to get away from you. You were following me. I didn't feel like <laughs> baby. And so I went off on this trip around the world and you just followed me. And then you got me, boom. Uh, so my point is, that the, the energy, the information is coming all the time, but we are focused on CNN or we're focused on some foolishness that happened or we're focused on uh, some argument we had or a disagreement that we had with someone. And if we take the time, again, um, just go take, take the time to walk with your husband in the moonlight, walk with your mate in the moonlight, and get a feeling of when is the best time to conceive your child, there it is. You know, there, there's your, there's the answer. Uh, because the soul that's perfect for you will definitely um, impulse you and you have to listen then and then go for it. Well, I was telling you about my daughter, the, my number one child. I had decided that she needed to come into the world. You decided. I that that's my theory, because uh, my husband, former husband, we were not lovers. We were not dating. He calls me on. We've known each other for years since we were fourteen. And this, that, yeah, he me. calls on the phone and says, "Can we get married?" And I thought, "Oh, oh, you must be drunk." But okay, he was like, "Who is this?" <laughs> yeah, okay. So we got married on the second day of June and nine months and 20 days later, she Get was up. born. So well, I told her, okay, you decided you needed to come into the world. So here you are. And she, she impulsed him. She impulsed uh, him. She impulsed uh, you. And, uh, and as, as I recall, I think I can say this. As I recall, he is the queen of clubs. Something like that. So May queen of clubs is inc incredibly intuitive. So he got the message cool out and clear. He yeah. came and knock, knock, knock and said, uh, I got this message. We got to do this. And boom. So she was there always, the souls are always impulsing us. 
mm -hmm. impulsing us when it's a perfect like gene combination, perfect birth date, they're yep. gonna let us know. So that's why I'm telling our guests, you know, listen. Listen. I, I, yeah, just go walk for the, and that moon was so gorgeous last night. Spirit just, is always impulsing us, always. Always, just really. Now, we only have a couple minutes left. So what else can you tell us about the cards? The cards of destiny. They've just made my life so much easier. And I'm going to tell you, it's because life is like the tide. It comes in, it goes out. It comes in, it goes out, it comes in. And so a lot of times things are taken away from us and we think that's, oh, ooh, ooh, it was taken away. But that needed to leave so that there could be space for something else to come in that's more profound, more beautiful, more appropriate. Uh, and the cards show us that nothing is forever. Nothing lasts forever. The only thing that we can count on is constant is change. So I, I like to tell people, don't get caught up or married to something that's really bad or something that looks like a difficulty in life because it's going to change. And don't get married to something that's really fabulous either because you know what? It's going to change. So when you know in the card system, when you know the timing of things, when you know that this is happening during this particular time, when you know that this is a good time to marry or divorce or conceive or start a business or end a business or sell your real estate or buy some real estate, which all those things show up in the system. When you know the timing of things, life is just a whole lot easier. Not to mention the fact that in the system, you understand yourself better and you understand those around you better. Okay, now we only have a minute left. So tell us exactly how they can reach you. They can uh, email me at IamRayaFox at gmail.com. I am I-A-M-R-E-A-F-O-X at gmail.com. Fine. So that we can learn more and get more information about all of my goodness there's so much to talk about i'm so delighted to share i'm so delighted to share yeah yes and uh do they come to you or do you do it on the phone how does that work we do it just like this you know we're all distancing everything so it's right. very simple uh in that uh you know we just make an appointment i meet a, it's a zoom meeting online or on the phone or whatever they have uh, it's very, you know, painless in that way. There's no traveling and driving and all oh, that. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, no parking and all that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, so that's what we would do. I'll send all of that out. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. As always, it's always a pleasure spending time with you. Likewise. And, and hopefully our guest, she will let us know when the baby comes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do a reading for the baby. For the baby, yes. yes. <laughs> thank you, Marsha. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so really much. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, my dear. Aloha. Aloha.